name is Elliot Sigwin, and this is the first look video for the Raptor prototype. aircraft is the new canard design. Uh, Peter Mueller out of Australia is building it. It's a prototype for uh, production model. So typical canard stuff, you know, 10-foot rudders on the tips of the wings, 33-foot wing. <clears throat> it's got pretty big fuel tanks. Put a Audi V6, you know, 300 horsepower, twin turbocharged. Uh, probably be able to pull closer to 350. It's got its own uh, prop speed reduction unit uh, that knocks it down by uh, 60%. You know, it's supposed to carry five people, pressurization, 30,000 feet, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, eventually, it's going to be a freaking awesome platform. And I'm super excited that uh, that Wasabi, you know, Elliot and I are going to be able to, to help them get there. So first impression on the Raptor was, number one, it's really big. The, inside the fuselage is expansive. I believe Elliot mentioned that uh, in the video while we were there uh, that it felt like he's about 15 feet away from me uh, when we were sitting in the two front seats. Boy, you're like 15 feet away. 15 feet away from the edge of the runway? No, from me. Oh, no. It's a five-seat airplane, so anyway, very large. I'm not worried about uh, having to not wear my parachute or some other thing where you're limited on space. Brought Mark out, he's the next scaled engineer. That's how we know him. If you read anything in the canard industry, you're gonna know about Mark Zeitlin. Hi, this is Mark Zeitlin of Burnside Aerospace. I was asked by Elliot and Justin of Wasabi Air Racing to help them do a flight and design review of the Raptor aircraft. Uh, a little bit of background about myself. I've got a couple of degrees in aeronautical engineering from MIT. Worked in the medical field for about 25 years and in 2005 came out to Mojave to work for Scaled Composites. I uh, did uh, the system safety analysis on the full uh, Spaceship 2 program as well as ran the Rocket Motor 2 program for three years. For the last seven years, I've been in business for myself doing engineering consulting and airframe and power plant work, specializing in canard composite aircraft. Sold them as a, as a canard expert to Peter. Peter brought them out to help us do the initial inspection. Really helped because, uh, you know, there are some, uh, some minor details with canards where you need to have certain things right. So on the canard, certain things are you know different than a normal airplane. CG is always a big deal, but with the uh, canard, there's a risk for a deep stall that's unrecoverable. Being that Mark has a bunch of experience doing condition inspection and pre-buy inspections, uh, we figured it uh, helps out uh, end up a more reliable uh, inspection with him on board. So that's why Mark was there with us uh, and ended up working really well. He was able to go through his normal uh, inspection checklist. It's available on his website. Uh, you can check it out at Burnside Aerospace. The Wasabi flight test first flight process starts with an inspection of the airplane. This inspection would be comparable to a uh, condition inspection or an annual inspection, but allows us to get a chance to understand both the structures, the systems, uh, and the general air layout of the airplane. Then we move on to what we call the low, low speed taxi test, which is basically an engine run and brake check, typically in front of the hangar. Then we move on to low speed taxi test, which is on the runway, but limited to half of stall speed. This is to eliminate the risk of accidental first flight, since at this point, the airplane may not be determined airworthy. It also gives us a chance to look at control power and whether the airplane is trying to respond to the, the control inputs even at these slow speeds. Then we move on to high speed taxi test. This only happens once the airplane is deemed to be ready to fly. It also includes a look at the flight controls and whether or not the airplane is responding to them, but is done at up to or even beyond stall speed. The idea here is that in the event of an accidental first flight, you go ahead and abort to a first flight. Once that is complete, we move towards the actual first flight. The first flight is typically limited to from 1.1 of stall speed to maneuvering speed. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes and does not include a stall or a gear swing. So that.
nice things about the airplane uh, was the, the ground handling on taxi. So it has I think, a combination between pretty wide gear stance and uh, some really really uh, well-sized brakes uh, with that bearing gear system. Uh, ends up being uh, being pretty easy to, to taxi uh, because of the canard configuration with the verticals out on the out on the wingtips. You don't get any you know thrust off the engine, uh, helping you use rudder to steer. Uh, and it's a fully castering nose wheel, so uh, you end up using a bunch of brakes for steering. It actually worked out really well. You know, we ended up taxiing for about an hour. Uh, including some max pilot effort, really re aggressive and braking there, and uh, you know didn't have a temperature problem on the brakes. Never noticed a, a decrease in performance, uh, so that's really awesome and actually kind of rare for for you know these experimental airplanes, uh, specifically prototypes. And the fit and finish of the airplane is very good. You can tell the guys who built it had composite construction experience. The tooling that they pulled it off must have been really a major pain in the ass to build because uh, the parts look fantastic. Uh, the other great thing about the Raptor is that is that massive interior. Um, so Peter designed it for, you know, with passengers and, and uh, uh, owners in mind, wanting people to be comfortable. But from a test standpoint, it means that I can... I can set that seat where I need to, uh, you know, plus three inches from a parachute, and I can get the door shut with my helmet on, no problem. The seat actually raises as you slide it forward, so if you have a, a over-the-nose visibility problem, you deal with it that way. And then the rotor pedals are also adjustable uh, pretty significantly, so it ends up being a, a great platform to get all your test equipment into the cockpit. Uh, as compared to the Q2 with the with the helmet and parachute on, you know, I'm not I'm not getting the lid shut, so. We ended up not flying the airplane this trip. There's a couple things that weren't quite flight ready. The biggest one being, you've seen in, in Peter's videos, he's been working on stiffening his uh, roll control system. So the aileron just very uh, springy. Think of a big spring being between the control surface and the, the stick. If you can think of the risk there being, we don't know what loads are going to be on the aileron. Uh, there's not been extensive CFD done on this airplane. So if you think of the example where you uh, you know get to, get to flying speed and quickly find out that uh, you know, you're at the stop and the aileron's being pushed back into a fair position by the wind. And unknown that we didn't want to deal with. So we worked with Peter to come up with a solution that, that he kind of already had in mind, but uh, he's going to go ahead and implement that uh, before we go flying. In this video, you'll see a split cam view of a roll authority check during a low speed taxi test. The two things I want you to notice are number one, that even though the stick is fully deployed at each one of the sweeps, the aileron deflection changes as the airspeed goes up. So as you go faster and faster, that air pressure is actually holding the aileron closer to the fared position. The other thing I want you to notice is that when the stick is moved quickly, there's a delay between the stick's movement and the aileron's movement. This again is that big effective spring winding up between the stick and the aileron. Do that like a roll evaluation. Call him off. There's 22. Right stop. Left stop. 30. Right stop. Right stop. Left stop. Forty. Right stop. Left stop. Can you feel a directional component? Yeah. Right stop. There is a directional component above like thirty, thirty-five. But there, I don't, don't see any uh, roll. Uh, the other issue was the you know, the main cabin doors. Uh, there are these two very large go wing style doors uh, on both sides of the fuselage, one on each side. Uh, and the latch mechanism, you know, it's designed for pressurization, so it has these sets of pins that run forward and aft into the into the fuselage out of the door uh, to take the pressurization loads. And then on the bottom of the door, where it, uh, you know meets the fuselage, are these hooks that kind of you know there are three hooks. Two of them go one direction, and the other one hooks the other way. So you get this you know self-reacting moment or self-reacting force there. So the problem was the that aft hook on the on the pilot door, uh, you know, wasn't retracting enough, so you couldn't actually open the door uh, once you got it fully latched. Comes with obvious uh, problems. Uh, the biggest one being, if you need to jump out of the airplane, uh, you're probably not going to get the door open, at least not with a bunch of mucking around with it. Even aside from from in-flight emergencies, uh, you know, ground emergency is kind of the same thing. You know, it uh, turns out it's really uh, useful to be able to get out of an airplane really fast. So uh, it's going to be. Uh, working on that, uh, stiffen up the system a bit and, and make it more uh, consistent. 
So next steps, uh, Peter's going to work on those things. He's already taken the nose wheel out to get access to the aileron control system. Uh, he's working on his new new setup there. Anyway, we gave him a list of, uh, my list was about eight items, and then uh, Mark had a list as well in his report. Peter's going to work on those, and then we'll reevaluate his mods. We'll go back out, regressions, uh, step through those when we get back. We're hoping in January, and then we'll uh, uh, push forward through high-speed taxi and go flying.